Welcome back to Australia's Northern Territory. We're in Parup right now for the Parup Market. And that's because when you arrive in Darwin, everyone says, are you going to the Parup Market? So we thought, grab a local. Let's see what's so special about this place. And who better to grab than the guy who runs the place? Bill Baldwin knows the Parup Market inside and out. What is it about the Parup Market that makes it such a destination spot? It's unique. It's different. It's a, uh, an assortment of local uh, homemade, handmade produce. Very rare stuff, showcasing the best produce and local talent. If it's made in the Northern Territories, chances are you can find it here. And because Darwin is so close to Bali, there's a strong Indonesian influence. But that's just the beginning. We've got over 100 nationalities represented at the, at the markets. One of the requirements to be a storeholder here is that your product must be handmade, preferably produced locally, and must be unique. So everyone told me, if you go to the Parap Market, get some laksa. Yes, yep. And, and yadi laksa. Yadi laksa. What's this laksa? Well, let me tell you. It's an Indonesian soup with coconut milk, spices, meat, and noodles, and it is to die for. Tasty dishes like these, handcrafted items for sale, even a massage thrown in for good measure, all make the Parup Market a Northern Territory shopping experience that can't be missed. I think every day of either sightseeing or shopping should end with a massage like that. Hey, let's check back in with our colleagues at Evening Magazine in Seattle. Good day, Megan. When more than 10,000 people show up at the Tacoma Dome this Friday to hear the words of Nobel Peace Prize laureate Desmond Tutu, they'll also be hearing another amazing voice. Tacoma's Crystal Lakin has been singing in church choirs since she was six years old. A few years ago, she won the American Idol of Gospel Singing Competitions, BET's Sunday Best. I got to meet Crystal on her first day back to her hometown church since that big victory. Do you feel that you've been anointed, that you've been touched by divinity? I do. I believe that lives can be changed through song. I believe that. I don't know if I'm the one that changes it. I don't think that. I think that and know that God does the changing. I know when I get on, on a platform, I feel this energy, you know, to go forth and, and, and just be, be who I am. And who I am is full of energy. The former emergency room nurse is now a full-time, award-winning gospel singer so in demand She's moved to Dallas to cut down on all that air travel. She says it's a real wow. honor to sing in front of Tutu and before so many fans in her hometown. She'll be bringing her trademark energy to the Tacoma Dome. Hope that wooden roof stays on. This is expected to be Desmond Tutu's last visit to the United States. The event is sponsored by the Greater Tacoma Community Foundation and our own Margaret Larson is the MC. Megan, back to you in the land of Oz. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Hey, let's continue our journey now through Australia. We need to head south, way south to Sydney and check out that gorgeous harbor. Measured by miles, Sydney is one of the largest cities in the world. Thankfully, it's compact with most of its famous landmarks located along the waterfront. But the best way to experience Sydney Harbor is to be on it. Guided by the wind and an experienced skipper. It's called Fort Denison. It is built on a little rocky island there that used to be called Pinchgut Island. For 20 years, Wendy Tuck has navigated the waters of Australia. We're very spoiled, aren't we? And when she's not racing in a regatta, she gives tours of the harbour for East Sail aboard one of their private yachts. Now, this is my office. I get a company boat. It's pretty tough, pretty stressful lifestyle I've got. Wendy never tires of showing off Sydney Harbour. Never. No. Said to be one of the most beautiful natural harbours in the world. Absolutely, I agree. Need proof? Just look around and overhead. I like taking kids under the bridge because they always think the mast is going to hit the top of the bridge. <laughs> Officially known as the Sydney Harbour Bridge, Aussies call it the coat hanger. I guess if you do look at it, it does look like an old wire coat hanger, so it's basically the coat hanger. It is the largest, still the largest single span bridge in the world. It took more than a thousand workers to complete the bridge in 1932, and not all survived. 
There's an amazing story about a man who fell off the bridge when it was being built. He was one of the workers, and as he's fallen, his tool went in the water before him. I think it might have been a hammer, and that actually broke the surface of the water, and he was the actual only person to live who's fallen off the bridge while it was being built. So, lost his hammer, though. The bridge dominates the skyline, but certainly doesn't upstage Sydney's other recognisable icon, the Opera House, the busiest performing arts centre in the world. It, too, has a nickname. Oh, the sinking nun. <laughs> That's about the only one I know. Instead of one huge opera house, there are many theaters beneath the building's famous segments or shells, designed by Jan Utzen. When he designed it, didn't actually have a way of building it. And someone, someone came up with a way of building it, like orange segments. Whether seen from starboard or port, these are the sites that have tourists going overboard for Sydney. Lots of different things. To to, to see all the time. And setting sail in style. You don't have to be a multimillionaire to be out here. You can get on a boat quite easily. And it is accessible for everyone. Now, in addition to those beautiful sightseeing tours, East Sail can arrange for you and your partner to have your own private tour on a private yacht. That sounds like fun. We'll have more Evening Magazine in just a moment. Coming up tomorrow night on Evening Magazine, we continue our tour of undiscovered Australia with some of the wildest wildlife in the world. Come within inches of Australia's most notorious predators and get a rare look at the Outback's spectacular birds. Plus, go crazy. She loves scratches. For the incredibly cute critters in Sydney. Finally tonight, one of the best parts about Darwin are the locals. They've invited me to belly up to their table here with a cocktail. Thank you so much, Natalie. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Megan. Loving Darwin. What, what should I be doing tomorrow? This is my first day. I want to hit the road running. I recommend the jumping crocodiles down at Adelaide River. Ooh, we're going to yes. send someone on that trip. Absolutely. Yes, you see them jumping right out of the water. Do you want to see sights like these for yourself? Joe has the details. There's nothing like Australia, a land of adventure and friendly locals. And it's easier and less expensive than you think. For a limited time, Down Under Answers right here in Seattle is offering Evening Magazine viewers the chance to visit Sydney and Australia's Outback Northern Territory and save almost $2,000. Find the information at king5.com. Megan, back to you. So I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun, but I got to say the best part of my trip so far is hanging out with some Aussies. Thank yes. you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Good night, everyone. Travel support provided by Qantas Airways with daily flights to Australia featuring outstanding service, premium food and wine, and the finest in international travel aboard the A380 aircraft. Go to Qantas.com to plan your visit. Enjoy the journey.